Welcome to Hustle and Flow with Heather Hubbard, episode number 91. Hi, I'm Heather Hubbard, and I was a litigator partner and practice group leader at an AMLAW 200 firm. I know what it takes to rise to the top. I also know all too well the toll it can take on your personal life. So how do you shine bright without burning out? How do you embrace your ambition without selling your soul? You're listening to the Hustle and Flow podcast. Welcome back. I am your host, Heather Hubbard, and thank you so much for joining me this week. So I have to be honest, today's episode I've completely changed up. I don't even know if we will take the entire time that I normally spend on a podcast. I feel like this one might be short because I often record these off the cuff, as I have shared before. I don't know. We'll just see how this goes. I had something planned. And as I was going to record the podcast, like I just wasn't feeling the topic, right? So we can always plan ahead. We can do things to have ourselves set up for success. And then we just don't feel like doing it. And sometimes it's procrastination. And sometimes it's like, no, I just don't even think that's a good idea. I don't like that. So that's where I was. I was like, I just don't like that. I don't want to do it. And so I posted on Facebook, I posted on Instagram, and I asked for you guys to give me ideas on what to record and radio silence. (laughs) Apparently, everyone was kind of feeling them. I don't know. I did have one person, Nicole. She's the only one that commented. She asked, can you do an episode on identifying goals? Nicole I've got you covered. We definitely will be covering that as we go into year end in the new year. That's already on the content calendar, as we call it. So we've got you covered. But so today I actually thought, well, maybe I just won't record anything at all. And then I thought, you know what, I'm just going to come on and be honest with what I'm dealing with right now. And hopefully there will be some wisdom that you can apply to your own practice, your own career. All right. So as you guys know, the Life and Law Planner is out. We did the pre-orders in April and May. Those shipped out at the beginning of October. And then we opened up the shopping cart for the public to buy on October 22nd. And we had a great response. Heads up, we are down to 50% inventory. I genuinely believe it will sell out before year end. So if you are interested, go ahead and buy your copy. We've been getting great responses, but I've also gotten two negative reviews. And one of the negative reviews was from a pre-order, and one of the negative reviews came from this latest round. And that's what I want to talk about. (laughs) Well, I don't really want to talk about it, but that's what we're going to talk about, is, you know, how do you take negative feedback? How do you take criticism? And what do you do with that? How do you process it? So... When I got the first negative review, it was from, like I said, a pre-order. And they were upset because they were wanting it to be the size of like a regular sheet of paper. So they were wanting it to be eight and a half by 11. And they did not like that there was a page for every single day. And I kind of just blew it off. I mean, I was disappointed. I was a little annoyed. But I just tried to shrug it off because I was like, clearly, they simply didn't read anything about the planner (laughs) because it says it's a five by seven. And it says that there is a page for every day. Right. So I was like, I mean, clearly, they just didn't read the instructions. They didn't read the details. So why are they now complaining that they bought something you know, that was fully disclosed to them. But I was concerned because they were the only one who had left a review after the April May stuff. So that's why if you're on my email list where you had actually purchased a planner, I said, please leave a review because I wanted to make sure that there was, you know, good perspective and balance. And I think we all experience this, right? You know, in today's, you know, day and age, and even think about your own self, right? We tend to, we're much more likely to leave a negative review then we are a positive review. If we have a great experience, we're just like, yeah, that's expected. But if we have a bad experience, we leave that review. So it's helpful as a reminder, you know, when you own your business, it's like, well, people, please leave positive reviews if you like it. But, you know, 
Am I doing that for everyone as well? No. And so it's a good reminder that one, we need to be living positive reviews when we do have a good experience with people. And two, we need to be asking for them. So you may not have a podcast, right? But some of you do have reviews whether it's on Avo or whether it is on your Facebook page, wherever it is, if there is somewhere where reviews can be, you know, left for you, you want to make sure that you're asking every single client, give them an opportunity to leave a review, right? Because if you just leave it up to them, they're probably not going to do it. So just make it super easy for them to leave an open and honest review and to ask for it. Even with this podcast, I rarely ask you guys to go rate and review it. I'll ask you right now to go do that. It's just not something that we think about. And so if you have your own practice, you need to be asking for this. But even let's say you're in big law where you don't really have those ratings and reviews, or let's say that you know, you're know you in-house or somewhere else, it's still the same concept of if you're doing good work for someone, it's worth you know asking for testimonials, right? So if you work with a client, asking them to provide a testimonial for you that you can put on your website or in your marketing materials, or maybe it's if you did a great project for someone for a business unit or a particular person with a lot of clout in in the business to ask them to write a short testimonial. And that may sound weird, but it's actually helpful to collect that stuff. It helps you prepare for your self-evaluations. It helps you prepare for if you ever you know, leave a job and want a promotion, or maybe it's a promotion within your company. Having that feedback is super helpful to have. Even if you then need like a letter of recommendation or a reference, you can ask people to leave you reviews on LinkedIn as to just being great to work with. I think that we forget to ask for that stuff. So that's a little bit of a tangent, but ask, ask for the feedback. Don't just wait for bad feedback to then go say, hey, can someone else help counterbalance this? But going back to that review, again, I just kind of shrugged it off. And it wasn't until a few weeks later, which happened to just be a few days ago, I had someone leave another bad review and their complaint was exactly the same. They were disappointed in the planner. They did not like it because they thought it was too small and they did not like the the daily sheets. They said it's much easier to plan their week when they can see like a weekly overview. And then I got frustrated again because I was like, why are people not reading? Like, why buy something without reading the details? And then they were upset that you couldn't get a refund. But they didn't ask for it because they did read that part, right? It's on the checkout page that it's non-refundable. But they were upset that they purchased something that they didn't like but the parts that they didn't like were fully disclosed also on the shopping cart. So it's easy in those circumstances to just get defensive and say, good Lord, why can people not read, right? (laughs) And granted, it's only, you know, it's less than 1% of buyers, but, you know, no one likes negative feedback. We are perfectionists. We just don't like to hear that, right? So it's easy to to receive it and then just blow it off and say, clearly, that wasn't legitimate. And I think we tend to do that with criticism in the workplace as well. So let's say, you know, a partner or someone else on the business side, or even a client, they might complain about something. And you might be thinking, I told you that three different times. Why are you now complaining that I somehow didn't, you know, inform you? I'm sure this happens with clients all the time. You're just like, why? You clearly weren't reading my emails, or you clearly weren't listening to what I was saying. Or, you know, maybe it's, you know, again, a partner or someone else who complains about something. And you're like, oh my gosh, that person is so crazy. Everyone knows they're crazy. Like I'm mad that they put it in writing, but hopefully everyone will know that they're crazy. That's what we tend to do. And if you reach out to your friends or your colleagues, they tend to support that, right? So this happens sometimes in our masterminds too. I'm thinking someone had recently, like someone had reached out to them and made a negative comment. And what we tend to do because we want to support and rally around each other is to say, they're crazy, ignore them, don't worry about them. And there's some truth to that, right? Like we have to stay confident. For those of us who already feel, you know, like maybe we're a fraud, when we get that negative feedback, we're like, oh my gosh, maybe I am. 
And so it is helpful to have people around you to say, you are awesome. Do not forget, you are awesome. Don't listen to them. But here's the other part of that. When we're constantly telling people don't listen to them, or we tell ourselves they don't know what they're talking about, we really lose the ability to learn. And sometimes there is some truth to what is being shared. And if we simply disregard it, we lose the opportunity to improve. And if we don't look into it at all, then if we don't really believe what we're telling ourselves or what our friends are telling us, which is they're crazy, you're the best. If there's that little, you know, seed of doubt in your mind, it still sticks with you. So I started wondering, well, what could I learn from this? Like, where might there be something that I can change? And so I really started brainstorming this and trying to look at this through their eyes. And a few things that I have come up with might be it. One is people don't actually read. (laughs) And this is a lesson for all of us, right? In-house counsel, they're always saying like, we need bullet points. Stop sending us 10 page memos. As lawyers, we want to document everything. We want to give all the information. But in this era of receiving constant information through email, social media, everything else, people don't pay attention to details. So one thing is, can I make the details even more prominent? Maybe, maybe not. I mean, it's it's all right there as you add to the cart. But again, it's something I'm looking at. How can I make this even more apparent, like make them look at that before they actually put it in their cart? And so that was my first thought. But again, I don't know how much I can actually change on that. But then it occurred to me where the real issue might be. And that's in my overall communication. So as I look back to the first few pages of the planner itself, I have like a welcome letter in there. I have a get started page in there. As I was looking at this beautiful sales page that we have with beautiful pictures and my social media and even my ads, I'm saying this is an amazing planner built just for attorneys that have busy schedules, and you should totally give it a try. What I say in the planner itself, but I don't accentuate in the ad or the sales page, is that the planner is designed to support a planning system. It is only one part of an entire planning system. You know, if you guys have gone through my Get It Done Challenge, Or if you've listened to my podcast episodes, you know that it's all about focus. And you've heard me probably even talk about the system some. If I am selling to people through, maybe they don't know me, right? Like it's just through an ad or they just got a referral from a friend and they're just wanting a planner. They may not be reading any of the details. Or if they're reading, they're just reading like the very first part, which is here's an awesome planner for busy attorneys. And they're like, "Um, I'm a busy attorney and that's a pretty picture, I'm buying it. And that's all they do. They don't read anymore. So by the time they get to the checkout page, they may not actually be looking at, hey, this is a five by seven. It's not an eight and a half by 11. They're not looking at, hey, this has monthly, weekly, and daily pages. It's very thick. They may not be looking at, this is one and a half inches. They may not be looking at any of that because They were just so excited about the prospect of a planner for attorneys that they just buy it, which would be great, right? Like maybe I just want buyers, but that's not true. I want people to love this planner. I don't want anyone to buy it and be disappointed. So I'm really now looking at how can I make sure that my ads, how can I make sure that the initial sales page is very clear that this is a planner that supports a system that helps you reach your personal and professional goals. I also had a mastermind, a four month mastermind client tell me in one of our summer programs, you know who you are if you're listening. She had told me she was like, hey, I bought the planner. I downloaded the templates and then I realized it's not going to work for me, but it's still beautiful. Love it. I'm like, tell me more about why it won't work for you. And she was like, well, you only have a few boxes for projects for every week and not very many things on the to do list. And my practice is a lot busier than that. And I said, well, it's not intended to 
be, you know, your case manager. And it's not intended to document everything you're actually going to do for the week. It's only intended to help you plan for those really important things in the priority matrix that you normally would be putting off and to make sure you stay focused on your goals, you know, regardless of what all you've got going on, because most people have a really hard time. They're just putting out fires all day long. And this planner is supposed to help you. This system is intended to help you stay focused on those big picture things that you want to make progress on, but don't know how to find the time for. And she was like, oh, I missed that. And I was like, yeah, there was a video that explained it. And she was like, I didn't see the video. I'm like, the only way to get the templates is to click the button below the video. (laughs) So, but all of this goes together in that I have to remember just because I give someone a video doesn't mean they're going to watch the video. Even though I say to someone, hey, here's a podcast episode that explains the system doesn't mean they're going to go listen to that. Even if I write something out that says, here's how to use the system, they may not read that. So for me, the lesson I have actually learned from this is I need to be as concise as possible. I need to be as repetitive as possible. And I need to give people access to the system in multiple ways so that if they miss one, they may get it another way. And I'm actually going to reach out to both of the people that left bad reviews and ask if they'll just get on a call with me because I need to learn what made them want to buy the planner. Because right here, like I am literally... I'm making stuff up as to what may have happened, but I just need to go to them, right? Even though it's going to be hard, I just need to go to them and say, what made you want to buy the planner? What did you think you were going to get? And what could I have said that would have prevented you from purchasing it in the first place based on what you were wanting out of a planner? And so hopefully some of you can learn from that experience as well. If you have clients ever complain. If you have partners or colleagues complain, maybe it's your children or your spouse or whatever. It's easy to really take negative feedback and criticism personally. I can guarantee you that I took both of those very personally. (laughs) And then I tried to shake them off and say, they don't matter. It doesn't matter. They just didn't read. But where can you say, you know what? I genuinely believe in what I'm doing. And I know I am awesome. And this planner is awesome. I 100% believe in it. And those two negative criticisms don't in any way change it. They simply were not the right buyers. And the question is, how can I make sure that I don't accidentally pull them in and convince them of something that they don't need? And so same for you, right? If you get that feedback, where can you say, okay, even if I know I have communicated this three times Where can I still step in and say, but is there something for me to learn here? And maybe if you're willing to have a frank conversation with your client or whoever is providing that negative feedback, you'll learn that you are using language they didn't understand. So, for example, when they keep telling me, well, I don't like a daily page, I'm like, well, then you should have bought a weekly planner. If you're a planner junkie, you know there's a thing called a daily planner and a weekly planner. And one of the unique aspects of my planner, which I don't really see on the market, is mine is a combination of a weekly and a daily. If you're not in the planner world and I'm throwing around words like weekly and daily, you have no clue what I'm talking about. But because it's like my world, my life, I just assume that you're up to speed and you're using that same language. You may be using language with your clients. Maybe you're business clients, your business units, where you're like, I've told you this three times, but maybe you're using legalese and jargon that they don't understand. So yeah, you've told them, but it didn't really compute. Or maybe you told them in very long emails or long memos, and they didn't really read through it because they don't have time. You may find that after you have that discussion and after you pull back and really try to look at it from their perspective, that you're not going to change anything. But there might be some valuable insights for you as well, where you can improve it even more. So that's it. That's it for today. That's what I'm working on. I've got two negative reviews where I want to not just shrug them off. I want to make sure that I am better communicating. So I'm going to have those. Hopefully they'll talk to me. And hopefully that's some wisdom for you as well that you can take back and put into your practice. And... 
If you've been listening to the podcast for a while, or you've participated in my challenges, and you love the concept of my planning system, but you never really know how to implement the whole you know, vision, strategy, goals, projects, tasks, you will love, (laughs) you will love the Life and Law Planner. And if you already have a planner that you love and you really aren't interested in a system, all you want is a calendar, don't buy it. (laughs) Okay, by the way, it's lifeandlawplanner.com. Thank you so much for joining me this week and for just letting me share where I am and what I'm working on this week. I hope you guys have a great week and I look forward to talking to you next week. Bye. I am super excited to announce that the Life and Law Planner is officially here. It is more than just a calendar. It is a full planning system. If you want to take back your days, your weeks, your months and your year, order your planner now. It will completely change your life and help you accomplish your biggest goals. There's only a limited quantity available. So go to lifeandlawplanner.com and order yours today.